Hello, and welcome to the NextNet Infrastructure Modernization Podcast. Here on AIM, we invite industry professionals and subject matter experts on to discuss current trends and technology topics. Today, we will be talking about building a secure data center with Pensando and HPE Aruba. With me today are Dan Radke, Business Development from Pensando, and Dave Luansing, Mid-Atlantic Commercial Systems Engineering Manager from HPE. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Doing fine, thank you. Very good, thank you. This is going to be an interesting episode in that we're talking about a collaboration between two companies. So our, I think our introductions are going to be a little bit more in-depth than usual. Dan, I'll start with you. If you wouldn't mind just giving us the breakdown of your company, who Pensando is, where they came from, what are some of the big products that have gotten people's attention? Pensando was started back in 2016 by a collection of ex-Cisco innovation engineers, including John Chambers. Randy Pond was the CFO at Cisco and a handful of others. You may recall the old MPLS team, Mario, Prem, Luca, Sony. But that innovation team came together and started the company in 2016. We announced ourselves to the world publicly in 2019, October. And in July of 2020, we started selling our first product, distributed services card, basically a smart NIC. What we did was we have an ASIC chip where we did P4 programmable software to embed network and security functionality onto the ASIC chip. And that was baked into the SmartNIC card itself. And just two months ago, we released our second product, a collaboration with Aruba, the Aruba CX10,000 Smart Switch, where we took that same functionality of an ASIC chip, embedded into the Aruba switch to give that functionality to each and every port on that smart switch. So prior to that, it was an individual computer by computer installation of this ASIC. That's correct. Distributed services card was basically just a smart NIC. So embedded into that, we had functionality like firewall, load balancing, encryption, micro segmentation. We have storage offloads like NVMe over fabric, Gigamon-like visibility. We could do a full network tap or packet mirroring, NetFlow generation, and IP fix. All of that was baked into that smart NIC, not consuming any CPU or memory from the server itself. And what we've done is taken that ASIC chip and embedded into a switch to basically introduce our second product, a collaboration with Aruba, the CX-10,000. And Dave, let's talk a little bit about the breakdown here. What is the Aruba CX switch line? The CX switch is really our next generation switch. It was initially launched in 2017. And what makes this switch very different than our pro curve line is that we have distributed analytics built into this. It's fully 100% API programmable. We have compute and storage built into this switch. So we have real-time insights and networks analytics all built right into this switch. And it's a fully non-blocking architecture. And this switch is really made for the next generation wireless and IoT. So we can give 60 watts of full power out all the ports. It also has smart rate. So it's really our next generation switch. It already seems like the Aruba CX just on itself is an improvement or a step forward. What makes the special sauce of combining that with the Pensando technology? Adding the Pensando functionality, what we've done is introduce a revolutionary new switch in the marketplace, something that has not been seen before, such that each and every individual port on that switch has a stateful layer three, layer four firewall embedded within it. It has the ability to do firewall logging such that it can send firewall logs back to another firewall policy engine or Splunk or Stealthwatch, wherever it may be. It also has all of the telemetry or visibility built into each and every one of those ports. Then you add on top of that, the performance improvements that we have from the ASIC chip from Pensando, and you end up with something that the industry has not yet seen to date, a really elegant way to introduce east-west security at the application edge of the network. If you look at Aruba, how our company started with the wireless is What made our wireless special is we had role-based access and we have a layer seven firewall built into every access point. Now we're talking about switching today. So why am I talking about wireless? Well, we've taken that same concept of roles and we have that in our switches also. So 
when you connect to one of our switches or to our wireless, you get that same role-based access, no matter if you're on wireless or wired network. Now we've taken with the Pensando and we've built a lot more security even into it. In terms of management, this is not the first time that Pensando and HPE have worked together, correct? Dan, do you want to talk a little bit about the distributed services platform, how that works just in general around servers, and then how it will work with the CX-10,000? Sure. So the distributed services platform is a combination of our ASIC chip product with the software to enable all the functionality, both in a centralized management platform, as well as the software embedded on the ASIC chip. So in the case of the smart NIC, our distributed services card and Pensando Policy Services Manager, those two platforms together are the distributed services platform. And now what we've done is the same within our switching environment. So we have embedded a P4 custom programmable ASIC chip into the CX-10,000 switch, and then enabled a management platform with a Ruba Fabric Composer as our preferred solution of choice. Or you could also use Ansible, Python, or the Pensando Policy Services Manager component. But combining that with a P4 programmable software embedded on the ASIC chip is our distributed services platform. And then in terms of some basic network definitions, Dave, do you want to take a shot at just explaining really quickly what the difference is between north-south traffic and east-west traffic and why they're important to consider kind of separately from one another? Sure. So if you think of north-south traffic, think of traffic leaving out of your data center and going out through your firewall. When we think of east-west traffic, we're protecting the servers that are in the data center. There could be one uh, server talking to another server in that same data center, and we want to protect that. So we're not waiting for that traffic to get all the way out, meet the firewall out at the edge. We're protecting that traffic right there at the port level. I think that's the end of the, the basics and the definition. So thank you for bearing with me there. But that does bring us to some of the big advantages of the kind of designs engineering wise that we're talking about here. Can you talk about like what the old design might have looked like to protect east-west traffic and what advantages the CX-10,000 brings to bear? Absolutely. So people have been trying to figure out how to extend zero trust architecture to the application edge of the network for some time. So that east-west edge firewall services. So historically, you've been able to do that in one of two ways. You you could do it with a software-based solution or an agent. An example could be Illumio or VMware NSX as an agent on the server. Or you can do it with a hardware-based solution, Fortinet coupled with Arista, or you could take a low-cost uh, firewall and put it off to the edge of the rack, you know, a checkpoint or Cisco ASA or some other uh, solution where you then hairpin your traffic out to that firewall and back and try to protect a collection of servers, maybe 20 or 200 servers in that type of an environment. And so it's been a challenging way to do it. It's either been too expensive in the manner of something like VMware NSX, or it's been too architecturally challenging. As an example, Cisco ACI or hairpinning your traffic out to a firewall and back. So what we've done is we've introduced a third way to bring layer three, layer four firewall stateful services to the edge of the application, to the edge of the network there by introducing this top of rack switch with all of those stateful services built in. So it's a low cost, easy to implement solution for bringing a zero trust architecture to the application edge of the network. And I think one of the big points there that bears repeating is the fact that you're able to do this on switch. And if nothing else, you're saving time and processing because you don't have to send packets out to be inspected, which then gets sent sometimes right back to the same port. Right. Plus, if you're sending your traffic out to a firewall to get inspected, that traffic's already on the network. Our goal is to inspect it and permit or deny it before it gets on the network. So just at the edge of that twin X cable where it comes into a top of rack switch, we're inspecting that traffic to allow or deny it to continue onto the network itself. It's a very elegant way of performing that type of zero trust inspection at the edge of the network, one that has not uh, existed until this point. What are some of the other things around performance that you can point to in terms of the way that this design and architecture is faster, more efficient, et cetera? Well, so some of the challenges, as an example, in deploying Cisco ACI, most of our customers have had challenges with the complexity of deploying it. And then 
you end up with limitations on the physical appliance itself. For instance, TCAM limitations on how many policy stateless ACL policy rule sets I can load onto that layer two, layer three switch. So there have been challenges in that environment. The advantage we have is we're not consuming any CPU or memory from that switch in the components of the stateful security services that we're executing. All of them are done in hardware on the ASIC chip itself. So as a result, we're really not impacting the performance of the appliance or the performance of the network traffic that's crossing that appliance. Right. And I think that's something that bears repeating again, is that the processing is happening in each individual port. It's not happening on a centralized CPU inside of the CX-10,000. Close. So the stateful services are happening on ASIC chip inside the CX-10,000, enabled at each and every individual port. So each and every individual port has the ability to do service chaining. So it can do one or multiple security stateful services, but it is happening on the ASIC chip within the switch. And what about future plans in terms of, let's say we buy a 10,000 today, what are the options? What are the, what is the future plan for, for management and updates features and that might come down the line in the future? So that's one of the big advantages of this platform is once you buy the switch with the ASIC chip in it to get future enhancements or additional functionality, it's just a software image release away. And so when we deployed this in December, It was deployed on Aruba CX operating system 10.09. And so when the next release comes out, 10.10, additional security functionality will be enabled. And when 10.11 comes out later this year, uh, additional security functionality will come out. So we're not asking you to replace hardware or ASIC chips or anything challenging. In addition, we're not asking anybody to do software programming or customization. All of it is turnkey so that you just enable it if you want it or don't turn it on if you don't want it. But that's the uh, beauty of it. So today, when we've released the first image on 10.09, you get firewall services, stateful, layer three, layer four firewall in each and every individual port. And you get firewall logging such that I can send logging back to Splunk or StealthWatch or ExtraHop or wherever you want that logging to go, Gardacore. In addition, we have all of the Cisco calls it telemetry, Gigamon calls it visibility, all of the network metrics and monitoring that you have in that environment. So it's a network tap with packet mirroring. And so when the next software release comes out with 10.10, we'll introduce large scale MAT and DDoS protection. And when the image release after that comes out, we're hoping to introduce IPsec encryption, micro segmentation, et cetera. Obviously, I can't talk roadmap specifics of what isn't isn't coming out in the future, but that's our plan right now. It's a very simple way to introduce new technologies. So down the road, we hope to introduce other things in, in that software platform, which is just an image release away. So you began public release as a product in December of 2021, correct? Correct. In terms of your, your beta customers and and people that helped you test this product in the real world. What were some of the stories that you heard about, you know, this is how we did it before. And this is the experience we have after, you know, those types of actual real world benefits that you have heard reported from customers. Sure. We had about 10 beta customers working on this switch since late summer, going through a very formal scripted beta testing process to determine, give us feedback and help find bugs, et cetera. And likewise, we had another couple dozen tech trial customers going through their own scripted process to try and see if they can break it or find challenges with it and give us feedback in that environment. So within those worlds, we did have one customer come back to us and say they love it as a firewall DDoS protection device at a cloud edge service. And so they're going to use it as a cloud edge device for DDoS and firewall protection for their on-premise data center from all of their cloud providers, as an example, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, et cetera, to do simple DDoS protection in that way. We have other customers that love it as a top of rack switch. And we had a handful of customers say to us, look, I've been deploying these 8325s in a campus environment or retail or military base. If I wanted to deploy a simple 1RU switch in that environment that had security services baked in, let's say I wanted to put IPsec encryption at my campus to connect back to my on-premise data center. 
this would be an easy, low cost way to do it. And, and they're absolutely correct. So those are three of the use cases that we've seen from some of those beta customers that we've been working with so far. You beat me to it. That was going to be my next question was, what does it look like in a decentralized environment like that? Oh, <laughs> so well, it, it can absolutely deploy in any one of those. Yeah. And in terms of the management, everything is centralized. So if you have a situation, for example, where you have corporate headquarters and then a couple of satellite offices that still want a certain amount of control over the hardware that's installed there, are they able to do that kind of like fencing of the management software so that the person that's overall responsible for the entire company has one view, but the person who's responsible for, let's say it's a co-location with disaster recovery has a, a different, more narrow, more specialized view? Absolutely. So David mentioned earlier, we have role-based access control within the switch and in the management plane. So the management plane we're recommending is Aruba Fabric Composer. The big advantage there is that it's full integration with the Pensando stack, but it also has full integration today with VMware vCenter or Nutanix or Splunk or Gardecore, other solutions that are out there such that via API, they can connect to our platform via Aruba Fabric Composer. So now you have different levels of network management that can control different environments, whether it be by geography or location in the network. And you also have the ability to separate your network team from your security team for role-based control. So we're really big fans of Aruba Fabric Composer for that reason, but that's the solution that we're, we're recommending to our customers. What happens if an ASIC fails for whatever reason? There's a hardware issue with that port in terms of you know, some of the designs that you would recommend in terms of best practices for a customer to, to protect against that sort of thing. Since all your security is built into the port, what happens if that port has a problem? So each switch has two Pensando ASIC chips embedded within and then a CPU to balance the traffic between the two. So obviously, if one of them were to fail, the entire switch would continue to work, but you'd lose half of your bandwidth capabilities within that switch. If both ASIC chips were to fail, you'd obviously lose the stateful services that are provided behind it. But because you're doing a lot of things on chip and inside of one frame, you're also getting some performance benefits too. Now, obviously, nobody wants to run in a one ASIC environment if you have two, but can you just talk a little bit about some of the performance benefits in terms of hard numbers that you've observed? with this deployment and architecture versus a standard one? Because everybody's more than aware that, you know, regular quote unquote standard network switches have failure situations too. So the performance capabilities of the ASIC chip have been tested several times by third parties in the uh, distributed services card, the smart NIC that I talked about earlier. In that world, the performance of this ASIC chip has been phenomenal. We're seeing 10x to 100x improvements on what exists out in the marketplace. On the smart switch, the Aruba CX10,000, we have seen 10x performance improvements in the environment, but we haven't yet got the third-party performance metrics that it gives us the ability to share that out to the world. But we're excited about the performance we're going to get. It's basically the same ASIC chip and the same performance numbers we were seeing on one side, we fully expect to see on the smart switch, the Aruba CX. Right. And just thinking about it from a physics perspective, you know, the, uh, the joke slash argument people always like to make is you can't defeat the speed of light. Well, if you never have to send the packet anywhere else, you're already doing a pretty good job of at least avoiding it. Right. The big advantage we have is we're just a bump in the wire because it's a hardware-based solution on the ASIC chip. It's bumping a wire for the traffic to get inspected or do packet mirroring, et cetera. And in terms of deployment strategies, can you just talk about how maybe a couple of different businesses, small business, medium business, large business might approach this type of thing? For example, do you think that an organization has to go all in and replace all of their switches at once? Is there kind of a graded way of rolling out a deployment? How would they do a proof of concept? Things like that. We built this with the idea in mind that we're going to go into a brownfield environment, brownfield being defined as an existing data center with existing server switches and security solutions in place. So we didn't have the assumption that somebody's going to go all in and replace their environment with a full Aruba solution. So knowing that we're going to be in an environment with, regardless of what server you have, Cisco, Dell, HPE, regardless of what your existing switching in network environment looks like? Could it be Arista, Juniper, Cisco, et cetera? That you would be able to insert this top of rack switch from Aruba into that environment without negatively impacting the existing Cisco or Arista environment. 
that you could add those stateful security services into this environment? And likewise, would it work well in a brownfield environment with existing firewall solutions? So uh, I don't want anybody to get the impression that our firewall is replacing the great big north-south perimeter-based multi-million dollar next-gen firewall. That's not us. What we're doing is introducing stateful layer three, layer four firewall services at the application edge where others have been trying to do it. It's been challenging to do it in the past. So now we have the advantage where we do have integrations with, as an example, Gardacore, such that I can take firewall policy from them via our RESTful API and enforce it at the edge on our switch and then return the favor by sending firewall logging back to Gardacore or Stealthwatch or Splunk or wherever you want that to go. And so we believe it's a very elegant solution to insert into an existing environment painlessly at a low cost. That was the whole goal of what we wanted to, to bring into this environment. And so that's the primary use case we built it for, a top of rack switch in that environment. You would traditionally put two of these CX-10,000s on each rack to manage the, the traffic below to the uh, workloads, uh, VMs, uh, servers, the applications below. Likewise, we have other customers that have come to us and said in a non-data center environment, I would like to use this switch in, in a similar capacity. So we've got it, as I mentioned earlier, as a cloud edge, as a campus switch, and as a data center top of rack switch. But it was absolutely built with the idea of top rack switch in mind and built with the idea that it's got to interact and play well with others, whether it's a security solution or an existing network switching environment. We talked a little bit about the advantages here about the architecture. So let's switch gears and talk about total cost of ownership. At the very least, this is going to be advantageous for customers because they have less hardware to purchase. But can you just talk through a little bit of the, the benefits in terms of where the expenses might lie and how the CX-10,000 solution makes those less burdensome? Absolutely. So the list price of the Aruba CX-10,000 is 45000 most of our customers are going to see a 40, 50, 60% discount, depending on where they are in that, in that world. But ideally, you're envisioning this is going out the door to a customer for less than $25,000. So in that world, you have a very low cost way to provide East-West firewall services. And so if you compare that to any of the other competitive solutions for delivering East-West firewall services, we think we're very cost competitive, extremely cost competitive. Let's talk a little bit also about some other models of how to get this into people's data centers. Dave, how does this fit in with HPE GreenLake, for example? We already talked a little bit about how some of the previous collaborations have gone with HPE and Pensando, but how does this fit in to those types of platforms and those types of uh, infrastructure as a service options? Sure. So if our listeners aren't familiar with HPE GreenLake, GreenLake is a way that our customers can get our new switches, get any of our services. We can do everything as a service, or they can just even really use this for financing to be able to get the product into their data center today. You were talking before and asking, Dan, how this also saves a customer money and reduces money, reduces the cost. All of our switches, our CX switches, no matter if it is from the data center switch or all the way out to the edge, we do not have any type of licensing. So you get all of the features that are built into the switch. It comes with the switch, no additional licensing or, or subscriptions or anything like that, that you have to take for these switches. And Dave, I'll ask you the same question I asked Dan earlier in terms of what have your experiences been, questions and answers that you've been able to give to customers about some benefits and some things that maybe either they hadn't thought of or maybe that you hadn't thought of in terms of the conversation about how to deploy these in, in the wild? It's a different team that I'm usually used to speaking to. So in the past, we would have people contacting us from the switching teams that were interested in the different features and functions that are built into our switches and how they can fit into their networks. The conversation now is more with the security teams. The security teams are really the ones that are most concerned about securing those servers in the data center. So it's really a different conversation now. So it really kind of pulls in the security team. And of course, everything today is all about security. 
So, you know, we want to make sure that everything is secure in that data center. Yeah, and it stands to reason in addition to the fact that all traffic goes over the network. So obviously that's a place of great focus for security folks. First of all, the recent uh, federal mandate that uh, zero trust becomes baked into a lot of infrastructure at the federal level, I think is going to bubble down to a lot more people that have maybe never even considered doing something like that in the first place. Yes, this is a whole new class of switch. So it is definitely bringing in all the different parties. It's bringing in uh, the, the server and the storage teams. It's bringing in the security team and it's bringing the traditional networking team all to the table when they come and they look at this new CX-10,000 switch. And in terms of the security team, one thing that a lot of customers have to deal with, whether it's from the federal government or from their own industry, are various types of security regulations and things like that. It might be a little bit early, but how does this product operate in that space in terms of checking boxes for security and getting through audits and things like that? So with federal certifications, uh, A, it's TAA compliant. So the switch is built in California. So it's US made. The software and Pensando's portion also Silicon Valley US made. The switch itself has FIPS certification today. The Pensando portion is going through FIPS certification in May with the next release 10.10. And then Doden APL is scheduled for later this year once we have FIPS. So that's on the federal side. I think we've gotten through everything we wanted to talk about. So I guess we'll close it out and I'll let each of you have a final thought. Dave, you want to go first? Yeah. So just talking about the CX-10,000 today, which is our data center switch and how we're being able to protect these servers. But just wanted to enforce that it's all part of the CX family of switches that we have that are from data center to core all the way out to the edge, the access level, and it's all the same operating system. So it's a very industry standard operating system. So, you know, I can take uh, people that are familiar with other switch lines and they can either get into the console and know their way around right away because uh, they're just very familiar with all those commands. So having the same operating system from the data center all the way out to the edge, it really just helps reduce the training and really helps get the whole team up and running pretty fast on our switch line. So just would like to encourage everyone to take a look at our CX switch line and I'll kick it over to you, Dan. Thanks, David. So first question to most customers is how are you doing east-west traffic inspection or east-west firewall services today? And a lot of times I get, we've explored it and we can't afford it, or it was too architecturally complex, but we want it. And so now we have an easy way to deploy it, a stateful firewall in each and every port of a top rack switch. It's a very easy, elegant way to deliver that type of security at the edge. Or often I ask customers, how are you doing IPsec encryption for all of your east-west traffic? And this is, again, is a very easy way to do IPsec encryption, not just for east-west traffic, but across the data center. And so it's something that I think is intuitive with most people, but nobody's been able to implement it until this point. So we finally have a very simple, very low cost way to deploy stateful security services at the network edge of the server. Anybody interested in looking at solutions in that path should absolutely consider Aruba's CX-10,000 as uh, part of that uh, solution. All right, I think that brings us around to the end. Dan, Dave, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. This has been the Annexinet Infrastructure Modernization Podcast, a production of Annexinet. Subscribe for free through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite listening app. Let's keep the conversation going. Follow us on social media, visit us online at annexinet.com, or contact us at info at annexinet.com. Annexinet, empowering what's next. <laughs>